what's going on everybody. In the previous video I showed you how you can make a basic plot in MATLAB, your typical plot, right? In this video I'm going to show you how you can do a, make a little bit more of an advanced plot if you need to plot like on a logarithmic scale. And um, you may or may not have seen any sort of applications using a logarithmic scale, but you you might in your engineering courses, especially I can say uh, in, a, in electrical engineering. But uh, let's take a look at how you can make a logarithmic plot using the semi-log function and the log-log function. Now, uh, this is the plot I'm going to make uh, right here. A, or I'm going to plot this function. A equals, and then a bunch of stuff here. And R and C are parameters, and F is going to be the independent variable. So F is like frequency. In th this, this equation comes up in electronics a lot. So F is like a frequency, and A is like a gain of like an amplifier. So this would be like the frequency response if you know about if you know anything about electrical engineering. R and C are parameters of this thing. So uh, I'm going to start out just by defining R as like maybe 3.3 e to the third. That's 3.3 times 10 to the third. And I'm going to say that C is uh, 0.1 e to the minus 6. So that's again 0.1 times 10 to the minus 6. So I'm just going to define R and C like that. They're parameters. You, I'm just choosing them just, just because. Now it's, it's, it's really A versus F that I want to plot. So uh, what I'm going to do is define F using log space. And I'll explain log space and why I want to use log space just in a little bit. But uh, log space is kind of in direct comparison to lin space, which is, was a function that we used in the previous video. I'm going to plot this thing from 10 to the 0 to 10 to the 6th right because when I want to make a plot I have to think about the range of the horizontal axis uh, and so I'm just gonna plot again from 10 to the 0 which is 1 so I'm gonna put 0 here which is actually 10 to the 0 that's that's how this log space function interprets that and then I'm gonna go to 10 to the 6 which is 1 million so I'm gonna put a 6 there and then I'm gonna put maybe 1000 and hit enter. Now if you remember the lin space function we did something very similar. What this is doing here is it's starting at uh, again 10 to the 0 then it's going to 10 to the 6 f that is and it's making 1000 equally spaced points but in a logarithm scale. An equally spaced point in a logarithm scale would be like 10 to the 0 to 10 to the 1st to 10 to the 2nd to 10 to the 3rd so you get the idea. That's different than a linear scale, and we used you know lin space for that. So just to show you, uh, if I do, if I do length of f, we have 1,000 points, right? Or 1,000 numbers, I guess. And uh, if we looked at the first element of f, that's 10 to the zero. So f is one. And if we looked at the last element of f, that's 10 to the sixth, right? 10 to the sixth, which is one million. And you can imagine what all the other points in between, you know would look like. Okay, so we have f, and then I need to uh, I need to enter this equation now into MATLAB. So I'm going to say a equals, and this one, this one's, there's quite a bit to this, um, I'm going to start with uh, 1 dot divide, 2 dot times pi dot times c, right? and then dot times f. And uh, that's my numerator. Good. Then I'm going to do dot divide, and I'm going to use the square root function, sqrt. And inside the square root, I'm going to put r squared, like that, plus 1 dot divide, 2 dot times pi dot times f dot times c. And uh, then I need a dot caret squared. All right, does that look good? I think that's okay. Let me hit enter. All right, it goes through. You just want to make sure that your parentheses are balanced there. And sometimes you can lose a parenthesis, so just be careful there. Now I have a, and we'll we'll look at the length of a. And that's a thousand. What this has done is it calculated a for each value of f. So there's a one-to-one -one correspondence now, because remember the length of f was also 1,000. 
being that there's a one-to-one -one correspondence in A and F, I can plot them against each other. So what I'm going to use here is the semi-log X command. And then I'm going to give it the horizontal F and the vertical A. Semi-log X, let me just uh, bring that up. And uh, let me let me dock it. My video capture software cannot show you the figure until I dock it. But anyway, when you hit that command, this is the figure that pops up. All right, and I'm going to turn the grid on. Grid space grid not grind. Grid space on. Now you can see the uh, logarithmic uh, separation in play here. Right, you've got ten to the zero, which is one, and then this is two. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all the way up to 10 to the 1. So this is the 10's decade now, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, all the way up to 100. This is the 100's decade, thousands, 10,000s, 100,000s, up to 1 million. So you can see how that's different than a linear scale, which we did in the previous video. The reason you would use a logarithmic plot, and this is very common actually in electrical engineering, but uh, the reason you'd want to do this is if you saw, if you wanted to see like some fine details in the ones, uh, you know, decade or the tens decade, but also some fine details in like oh, the hundred thousands decade, right? If you had a huge range like we do here, from one to one million, and you wanted to capture fine details, uh, you could, you would use a logarithmic uh, plot, all right? Because imagine if you used a linear plot you would never see the details in the ones because the ones would be so finely jammed together way down here. You would never see any details there. All right, so now after I have this plot, of course, I can I can uh, execute the same commands that I saw uh, previously, like, like if I wanted to give, uh, in a previous video that is, if I wanted to give the X a label, I could say something like maybe frequency in hertz, something like that. And so then it comes up, and if I wanted to give the Y label, I could say gain, something like this. This is this is a typical graph for the gain of an audio amplifier. In case you don't know electronics, it's fine. But uh, then I could, um, you know, I could I could enter the uh, plotting tools, uh, toggle that on, and I could change some other things if I want, right? But I'm not going to do that in this demo. I went over that in the previous video. What I do want to do here is show you how you can make two plots and the same or more on the same set of axes. So what I'm going to say here is um, hold on or e yeah, hold on, hold space on. And what that does is it tells MATLAB that I'm not done plotting on this figure, that I'm going to plot something else on this figure. So what else am I going to plot? Well, let's say I'm interested in how does this curve change if I change R and C, right? So I'm going to change R to be um, instead of 3.3 e to the two. Let's let's do uh, how about one, 100 e, one e to the two, right? One times 10 to the second, and then maybe uh, maybe C stays the same, right? C is still uh, C is still 0.1 e to the minus six. All right, so now I'm 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 investigating how R changes, uh, the plot, and this is something that you will do in engineering a lot, regardless of your discipline, is uh, is how how do my results change as I change some certain parameters, right? All right, so now with R and C change, I have to recalculate A. So I can I can recalculate A quickly by bringing up the previous command, right? And I'll hit enter. All right, so now uh, now there's a different A for each F. So being that I've told MATLAB to hold on, I am going to say semi-log X F A again. And I'll hit enter, and you'll see it, it's smart that it knows to plot that in a different color. And there it is. So that's how decreasing R will change this plot. That's pretty useful. right? You can imagine that you would use that in engineering quite a bit. Now, if you have more than one plot on the same set of axes, what do you need in your plot? Yes, a legend. And the command for that is legend, just like that. And then you, in strings, you put uh, you, your labels for each plot. So being that I plotted the blue one first, I want to list the blues uh, label first. I'll say amplifier 1, 
right? You know, maybe maybe the blue amplifier is like a, a Bose amplifier, right? And uh, so I'll say Bose amplifier like that. And maybe the red one is like a Yamaha amplifier, Yamaha, like that. All right, so I'll give that the legend. And there it is. It appears in my plot. And maybe I don't like the position of that, so I can just click it and I can drag it around, right? Drag it over here, something like that. But there you go. And if you open up plot tools, you can you can you can change uh, certain parameters of the legend if you'd like. And then of course you can save this and uh, you know do it do all those good things that we did in the previous video. All right. Now I am actually going to uh, x out of this figure. All right. And I am going to create a new figure. So one thing you can do is say figure like this, and that creates a new figure. Or you don't have to, but um, if you if you don't execute that command, then the next plot will be uh, overwriting the previous plot. So you want to make a new figure now, and you really should. I should have told the computer to hold off, right? I should have said hold off because we are done plotting. Okay. Now, uh, one thing I, one thing you might also want to do is, uh, for the, for a very similar reason, make the vertical scale a logarithm scale as well as the horizontal scale. So to do that you would use the log log command log log and then I will give it a frequency F and gain A and I'll hit enter and uh, let me dock that to show you. Okay so this is the plot that comes up and it's it's a plot of the same exact thing it just it's just represented differently. The vertical axis now is also on a logarithm scale. Let me turn the grid on. Okay, and so you can see now not only is the horizontal this kind of weirdly uh, spaced uh, scale, but so is the vertical scale. So this is also common in electronics quite a bit. Um, anyway, uh, that's all I wanted to cover in this video. In, in the next videos we're going to look at how to make bar charts and histograms. Thank you.